Have you ever opened the Bible, read something, and said, Wait! What does this mean? What is this talking about? The parable of the rich man and Lazarus may seem this way at first, but when we dig deep in Scripture beneath the surface, we see the gems of truth that God has for us. The main point that Christ is teaching through this parable is that just because you are a believer, have a good life and go to church, does not mean that you will go to heaven. Something else has to happen for us in order to make it to heaven. What is it? Let's find out. Do you know why Christ tells us this parable? The Bible says in Luke 16, 14 that the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things and they derided him. This well-respected group of people looked down at Jesus and mocked him and expressed contempt about him because Christ had just told them the parable of the wicked servant in the first part of Luke 16. We covered that parable in the previous episode, so be sure to check it out if you haven't seen it. In order to quiet the mocking of the Pharisees, Christ tells them the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. This parable shows that covetousness, selfishness, and unhelpfulness will only bring eternal death. Take a look at it with me in Luke 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. The beginning of this parable talks about a very rich man who dressed nicely, who had a great life. The rich man called Abraham his father multiple times in this parable because he was actually one of Abraham's descendants. The rich man represented those who had the truth, meaning the Jewish nation, since they were the children of Abraham and literally had the truth. Today, he represents those who have the truth as it says in Galatians 3.7, They which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. On the other hand, Jesus talks about someone completely different, a beggar called Lazarus. Luke 16.20 says, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This man did not have a good life. He didn't have any money. He had to beg. Around the time of this parable, the Jewish people referred to the Gentiles as dogs. Now, what do the crumbs of food represent? Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. The crumbs or food represent the truth of God's word found in Jesus Christ. And the Gentiles or Lazaruses of today represent people who do not have the light of the scriptures, God's word. As the parable goes on, what happened next? Verse 22 says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. We see that the beggar, or Lazarus, ended up in Abraham's bosom, and the rich man ends up in hell. The dictionary says that bosom refers to chest, which implies loving care, protection, or closeness. In Exodus 4, 6, God tells Moses to put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, it was leprous. Moses literally didn't put his hand inside his chest, but as we can see from this, Moses put his hand on his chest or close to him, under his jacket. When you hold a baby, how do you hold it? You hold it close to you, on your bosom, on your chest. This is what Jesus was talking about here. The poor beggar was close to Abraham, while the rich man, who called Abraham his father, wasn't even close to him. Now, do you notice how it says in verse 21 that the poor beggar wasn't close to Abraham immediately after he died? He wasn't immediately carried to heaven? This would contradict what Jesus said in John 5, 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they which have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. When did Christ say that time was going to be? At the resurrection, when all that are in the graves, not those in heaven or hell, will hear his voice. So what Christ refers to in this parable is the time after the resurrection, the time when the faithful will be taken to heaven and those who have done evil 
will be raised to receive the punishment for their sins. Christ talks about the final reward that the rich man and Lazarus receive. People may ask, why did Christ use a real person's name in this parable? Well, look at verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. In this parable, the rich man asked for Lazarus, the beggar, to be sent back from the dead, because he said, if one raised from the dead, they will repent. Well, guess what? Sometime later, Christ raised a man called Lazarus from the dead. Do you think the Pharisees then believed on him as the Son of God? Unfortunately, the majority did not. They didn't even believe Christ's greatest miracle, even though someone came back from the dead to witness that Jesus is the Son of God. In fact, this miracle is what ultimately led the chief priests and Pharisees to decide to put Jesus to death, as found in John 11.53. They even wanted to put Lazarus to death because of this miracle again in John 12.10. At the time when the parable was given, the rich man represented the Jewish nation and maybe even more specifically, the Pharisees. Who does the rich man represent today though? He represents those who have the truth but feel as it says in Revelation 3.17, I am rich and I am increased with goods and have need of nothing. Do we feel like that sometimes? If so, may the Lord have mercy on us and help us to realize our true condition, that we are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Let us realize our helplessness and our need of help from above. Let us realize that we are blessed and we have a duty to share God's Word, the Scripture, with others. But instead of just giving to others a few crumbs from our table, Let's bring them to Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus says in John 6.35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Will you come to Christ? Will you believe in him? There are millions of people today who, like Lazarus, are full of wounds and sores from this life. They are longing to be fed. Will you bring them to Jesus so that he can heal up their wounds and give them the bread of life? May God help us do this and be strengthened in Scripture.